Hello everybody, welcome to Around the Rim. We didn't have many episodes in the first season, but that's why we're starting off new um, in the second season. It is the third week of football, and we started a little bit late, but we are so glad to have it back. I'm wearing my NBA headband and a Johnny Cash shirt. Don't know if that's the best way to look. But um, yeah, welcome to the first episode of um, Around the Rim. We will be covering my state, Alabama's, um, <coughs> you know... Uh, football team stuff. That's what we should do, you know, because, I mean, there should be a football show on Friday night. But, yeah, six days till my actual 12th birthday show. Yeah. Uh, we will be joined by Chad Wickwood in a minute. The original founder of Slaughterhouse of Horror. Also known as the Italian Stallion. Okay, yeah, with his skeleton shirt on. All right, well, we're going to first talk about, you know, football. That's, I think, what we did on the first episode of Around the Rim when it was just me. Um, right now, I think in, with 13 minutes and 31 seconds to go, now 24, Baylor is getting beat by Rice. Rice is 0-2 and, and Baylor is 2-0. Baylor, though, if you think about it, hasn't actually had that, um, good of a football team recently. Baylor? Baylor. Well, you wouldn't. Well, they've had good teams, but they've never been able to put some together, like Stanford. You can say. <coughs> Well, traditionally, Baylor has not been good. So what Baylor has done is excellent. It takes a while. I mean, they've gone from nobodies that were the doormat that, to other teams, to homecoming t team that everyone plays, to uh, to, their coach to, to reaching there. They haven't got there yet, but um, but they lost their coach. And uh, losing their coach and everything that was going on, the controversy, um, yeah, it's surprising home. that they're too. He had way too much fun on homecoming. I'll tell yeah. you that much. <laughs> <laughs> you know more information about that than I do. Yeah, sadly. Um, Talk for a second while I grab something. Okay. Well, we will um, continue. Well, about the Baylor continuing. Baylor, they you think of them as a good team. You know, as RG three, which we will get to RG three status um, in a minute or ten minutes, however long this video. Is because if you remember our last video, it was 45 minutes, but then we had stuff going on with the phone, so now we're on the Kindle. Um, oh, and some advice I'm giving you some camera advice to look right into the camera. Look at this little speck right up there. Huh. Looks like a little dot. I found that out, you know, and I did a video like five minutes ago about me turning 12, and like it looks so good because all the famous YouTubers look right into it, and I never knew how. But, yeah, Baylor, they should be back. You know, I mean, you expect them to because, I mean, even though they lost their coach, you know, a lot of people have had to deal with losing their coach. USC did. Not that it helped them any. <laughs> I mean, Western Kentucky looked a bit better than them. Um, but, yeah, uh, the last play in that game is Jermichael Hasty ran, uh, run, ran, says run, for three yards to the Baylor 33. And now Seth Russell pass complete to Chris Pat for eight yards to the Baylor 41 for a first down. That should be about on the 30-yard line. But, of course, you're probably watching this video after this has happened. And if you are, then that game's already, you know, gone off. So this should really just be covering, you know, the rest of football season. Because there's a lot of people going to be like, oh, well, you know, I didn't really watch the first week of college or the third week of college football, even though right now it's the, like the seventh, depending on when you watch this video. So I'll just watch this. So we'll just kind of cover it. Uh, but, yeah, uh, we'll talk about RG3's injury status coming up. And next we're going to talk about the new best team in the league, Houston. Um, so we're going to wait until – the Slaughterhouse of Four founder returns, and um, you know, it's just the way it goes. Yeah, but that is a bit off if you're watching it like right after this is uploaded. Like if this was to be live streaming, and you were watching it right when I say this, which I probably do need to try to start live streams. Um, this would be a bit off because you know the computer that we're looking at doesn't really have the fastest. I'm back. Okay. This is a show where we eat brats. Salads, potato skins, wings. Yeah, but you can't whatever. see. We can't. Okay, let's move this. Well, they don't want to see me eat, so let's, yeah, let's leave just... it like it is. But for those of you who have wondered where I went, I'm preparing a salad. I've done had the potato skins, and I've had the uh, sausages. Now some good old healthy Thousand Island. <laughs> With salad, that'll make it actually healthy. Uh, but now we're gonna talk about the new Clemson, maybe Houston. Uh, Houston beat Cincinnati 40-16. to 16. I actually keep forgetting Cincinnati because I'm used to hearing A.J. McCarron, Cincinnati Bengals quarterback that's actually probably better than the jerk Andy Dalton, who I don't even know. More people probably like him. 
But, um, yeah, the top performers in that game were Greg Ward Jr., who, had, who went 24 of 36, had 326 yards and one touchdown. And in rushing, the, the last stat was passing. In rushing, we had Greg Ward Jr., also for Houston, had 26 carries, 73 yards and two touchdowns. And for receiving, I'm going to say Lionel Bonner for Houston, maybe Lionel. He had eight receptions for 119 yards. And, of course, you know, Houston being 3-0, 1-0 in the Americans Conference, that would probably really be good for their conference, too, being that, you know, Houston doesn't come from that big of a conference, like Western Kentucky. Well, it was a big win for them. Well, Western Kentucky uh, was, a bit, was actually in the summer. <coughs> See, that's actually good, though. Um, my grandpa, Pawpaw, was talking to somebody the other day, and I got confused. I thought Pawpaw had season tickets. But the dude had season tickets to Appalachia State games, and I would actually want to go. Appalachia you know, State plays. I'd go see Georgia this State games. You know, Appalachia State cheap. plays Miami this weekend. That'll be interesting. And Mark Ritt, Clark, who's coach the new Mark coach Ritt. of my, the Miami Hurricanes. Yeah, I'm not one of those people that just pretends to know stuff about football. I'm an expert. I also play. But um, which you did too. Uh, Saturday, September 17th. That past game was um, the 15th and the. Today is the 16th. On um, the 17th, we have South Carolina State, which is SC State. That they must did they end up, they got beat by um ECU, didn't they? East Carolina Pats? I have not. I don't know. ECU well, it, is East, playing someone. They this beat weekend. them then um, because the, South Carolina State's SEC, SC State, right? That's what they call them. Yeah. Okay, I don't know much about right. them. Well, they play Clemson, and I, if I'm right, uh, we went to a bowl game against Florida in Will Muschamp's. Was it Will Muschamp's final game? Or was it? Well, well Muschamp did not coach the game. He, um, it was the final game of that season. But he uh, he finished the regular season game. He may have been fired before the regular the last game. I'm not sure. But no, he did not coach. There was an interim coach at the bowl game, which they did okay. defeat uh, East Carolina at. Well, your players to watch in this game is Deshaun Watson for Clemson. He on pass. He is on pass. On the passes, he is 46 of 87 for 540 yards and four touchdowns. If you can tell, this is probably not the previous game. And then you have Wayne Gow Gallman for Clemson on the rushing. 39 carries for 157 yards and one touchdown. And for receptions, we have Mike Williams from Clemson with 11 receptions for 198 yards. Um, who you got in this game? Because I, I think I'm going to take it up a notch and say uh, South Carolina State wins just by a margin. Because after that game last week, because I tell you, though, these SC, these SCS, what do you call it, F FSC teams? What do they call FBS. 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 Those teams really did good. You know, you saw Georgia almost get beat. You know, uh, Western Kentucky, who isn't one, but is a smaller team, uh, uh, gave Alabama a game. I'm going to step it up a bit and say that you're insane. There's no way that South Carolina State's beat I Clemson. think I, I'm, I'm just going to say they might. Now, what There's I'm, no way that it's going to be close. Clemson's had two close well, games against inferior opponents, and now well, – well, I think that if I – would I be shocked if Clemson blew them And you blew, could be right. If Clemson blew them out, I would not be shocked. But I'm just going to guess my gut and say South Carolina State's going to realize we got to turn this thing around. We need to show these guys that we're not this Will – we're not like Will Muschamp who really needs to actually find a good job and do good there. We're not like South Carolina. We're going to start winning. Not – you know, because South Carolina looked terrible, you know, after Mississippi State – Coaching all of its coaching staff, including Dan Mullen, should have been fired for getting beat by South Alabama. Well, they probably overlooked South Alabama. Well, you South can't. Do okay. There's no excuse. Well, for this that. is a game I also think is going to be an upset. I didn't know Louisville was ranked, but <coughs> number two, Florida State, at ten ranked Louisville. Both teams are two and zero, and Louisville is one and zero in their Atlantic Conference. But Florida State is not. I see Louisville beating Florida State. I saw Florida State's running back Deshaun Cook. Like, lose the ball going into the end zone. And even though they still won that game, that just got Not to me. Deshaun Cook. Whatever his freaking name is. I don't keep up with him because I don't think he's that good. But Davin Cook. Davin Cook. Yeah, Dalvin Cook. Davin, now, Dalvin. He, I just don't think this Florida State team should be ranked number two. They might win, but do I, I think that they're. Even, I think they're pretty good myself. But I, I think that they're I think going Houston, to smoke Louisville, if you no, want my opinion. No. Okay, well, Louisville gave up a lot of points to Syracuse, and who is Syracuse? Uh, Florida State will torch them. I don't know though. I, I, I'm gonna say that Louisville wins this maybe by a narrow margin. Um, they might keep your, it close the first half, but it'll your be players, over a second. 
Your players to watch is Lamar Jackson for Louisville on the passing. He is thirty. He has, he is thirty seven of sixty two, six hundred ninety seven yards and seven touchdowns. And on the rush, Lamar Jackson for Louisville, thirty two carries and three hundred eighteen yards for six touchdowns. Obviously, this is season averages, as I've said before. J Jamari Staples for Louisville on receptions is, has nine receptions for two hundred and nineteen yards. Um, okay, let's go ahead and go to the next game. And I see, also see an upset here. I see Ohio beating Tennessee. Um, Ohio is one and one. Tennessee's two and zero. Oh. After that, Appalachian. We're gonna have to push pause and give you either a drug or an alcohol test because there's and maybe you need to be in the four hundred. Okay, I'm just saying. Ooh, I like the next if one though. Okay, you look, were look, right I, in these upsets. It would be the biggest picks ever. In I the don't history. think. I don't think I can. It, I know Appalachian State probably has a good football team, but I just can't take Tennessee seriously. After, you mean Ohio? Oh, yeah. after almost getting beat by Appalachian State, I think that Ohio realizes we need oh, to be you'll better. Take them seriously after they beat the crap out of Ohio. I don't like Ohio State, but um, you know Rachel Delius ran. Uh, you know Mom's friends with her on Facebook actually. She asked on the Zoom, but uh, she's in Ohio, so you know. Whatever. How does that pertain um, to this show? I don't know. I don't know. I'd like say random crap. Ooh, players to watch. This is the first time two teams have been mentioned in the same players to watch. Uh, Greg Winham from Ohio, 47 of 82 on passes. He has 560 yards, five touchdowns. On the rush, Jalen Hurd from Tennessee, 50 carries for 290 yards and a touchdown. And for receptions, Pappy White for Ohio, nine receptions and 154 yards and a touchdown. That could be Poppy. Now, if you mention any players from Idaho Vandals on a list to be watched, then I'm definitely calling you okay. crazy. Here's where I also don't see an upset. I can't stand North Dakota State. It's obvious that the refs are cheating them into all this crap. I was going to beat the crap. I, I, I don't know if they'll beat the crap, but I think I was going to beat will North Dakota State. Beat them. I was North Dakota big, State uh, is taking a big step playing this game. Oh, I respect North Carolina. And uh, I've always North looked. I, I, I used to play as Iowa, and now they did good. <laughs> Actually, I've heard the media being really tough on Iowa because Iowa does not play any tough out of Ooh, conference. You know that uh, the Tennessee teams. game is going to be 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and the Florida State game will be 83 degrees, and the South Carolina game will be 89 degrees. The well, reason the, being the, this game is going to be 78 degrees, so that will actually be the better. Florida on the Florida State game health. was played earlier. The Florida State game is an 11 or 11:30 game. Still, you know. Okay, well, um, your two thirty game is going to be a warmer game. What do you see? Who winning? You see Iowa too? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I I could see a ball. Now, would I be shocked if North Dakota State net won? Only if the refs suck like they do. And I think it'll be a good game. Well, that's how North Dakota State win. Like I was a Towson fan. And they went to the championship. And I'm like, you know, I'm doing this. I'm a golden, you know, person. I'm pulling for this team. That's why I'm pulling for the 76ers this year to see if the same luck will happen. But, and, uh, you know. Why don't you pull for the Braves? Ooh, we were, we were just talking about this team. But, um, yeah, uh, uh, players to watch on the pass. C.J. Be Beathard on passes uh, from Iowa. 32 of 48, which means he's only actually missed 16 passes. 427 Yards and four touchdowns. LaShawn Daniels Jr. for Iowa on rushing. 25 carries for 195 yards, pretty good, and three touchdowns. And Matt Vandyberg, the B and Berg is capitalized, but it is combined, um, on Iowa for receptions, 11 receptions for 228 yards and a touchdown. But it's not like they've actually probably played anybody. Um, these are probably going to be the later games. Georgia State, who is 0-2, plays Wisconsin, who is 2-0. And as much as I'd love to say I think Georgia State's going to win this, I could see Georgia State maybe giving Wisconsin a game, but Wisconsin, unless something happens, I see Wisconsin beating Georgia State. And I, ha and I, I that's not what I want. I want Georgia State to win this game so badly, but it's Wisconsin. You know, they beat LSU. i tell you what Georgia State's going to give Wisconsin, and it's a word I can't use on this show. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say the cheerleaders can give it to them, too. <laughs> oh. Okay, ooh, another game that we were talking about. Uh, Bart Houston for Wisconsin is 34 or 53 on the passes, 436 yards and two touchdowns. Corey Clements on Wisconsin for rushes is 42 carries and 197 yards and three touchdowns. Robert Wheelwright, the W in right, is not capitalized for Wisconsin. Receptions, eight, yard, eight receptions and 159 yards. And a game you were also talking about uh, at a, um, tw number twenty five Miami two zero against Appalachian State one and one, and I think that I could see Appalachian State winning this game. 
I could see Appalachian State winning this game. I don't I, know enough about mine. I'm going to take Appalachian State and say they're going to win this game. Maybe by a narrow margin. Uh, the players to watch for, um, ooh, another one of these. Uh, for passes, Brad Kaya, Kaya for Miami, 29 of 49. Pretty good. 326 yards and four touchdowns. Mark Walton for Miami, rushing 32 carries, 271 yards. Not bad. Really good, actually. Five touchdowns. And Jaquil Capel for Appalachian State has seven receptions for 85 yards. Not bad. Um, then we have the game that I'm worried about most, which is number one, Alabama at number 19, Ole Miss. Ah, not just being an Alabama fan, I really do think, though, that Alabama is going to win this game. I think that Nick Saban will not let this happen because the only time that Alabama's been beat three times in a row, or a team under Nick Saban has been beat three times in a row, is when he was coaching Michigan from 97 to 99. Fun fact. I'll tell you a player you got to watch for. Whenever this guy's in the club, you got to watch out for this player. I'll one. be with them in the background pretending I'm 18. With my fake driver's license. Um, uh, it'll be 86 degrees. It says there could be lightning. And, but uh, Chad Kelly is the quarterback to watch with and passes 41 club, through 66 and 532 yards. Degrees. And seven touchdowns. Rushing on Damian Harris, Alabama, 20 carries for 183 yards. I didn't know he was actually that good. Receptions at R. I thought it was Al, but R. Darius Stewart for Alabama. Nine receptions, 250 yards, and three touchdowns. This. What do you think? I mean, I obviously think that you're going to say that. You think Alabama. Okay, uh, Colorado at Michigan. Both teams are 2-0. and Michigan's ranked fourth. Uh, the players to watch is Sifo Luifa. I don't even know how to say this. For Colorado, on passing 38 of 51, 522 yards, three touchdowns. Chris Evans for Michigan, 17 carries on the rushing, <coughs> 147 yards and two touchdowns. Then you have Shea Fields for Colorado on receptions for five receptions and 157 I'm not going to talk about players to watch because I'm not going to watch this game because Michigan doesn't play anyone. And I don't respect like Ohio schedule. State. Yeah, We're backed out of a game with Arkansas, so uh, we have some good games. Yeah, they play, they can play Hawaii and Central Florida. I think and, uh, Colorado will Colorado give all they want. Colorado I mean. will give them a good game, but until something crazy happens, I see Michigan winning this game. Um, next game is Oregon, ranked 22 against Nebraska. Both teams are two and zero. It'll be 78 degrees, and unlike the Colorado and Alabama games. It should be sunny with some clouds. Players to watch on the pass. Dakota Prukop. Oh, that didn't really sound right when I pronounced it. I'm just going to say Prukop so it doesn't sound like I'm cussing. Oregon, 42 of 61, 602 yards, 6 TDs. Third touchdowns. Rush, uh, Royce Freeman with 4 TDs, 294 yards, 32 carries. TD stands for touchdown if you are a retard and don't like football. Okay, well, Nebraska played in quite a few close games last year where they lost on the final play or won, or I forget their whole schedule. Yeah. One note to uh, make everyone aware of is the coach of Nebraska. He's in his second year. His name is Mike Riley. Mike Riley is an Alabama guy. He uh, played at the University of Alabama. But Mike Riley coached at Oregon State, the rival – of Oregon in what is called the Civil War. So mm. Riley has only beat this Oregon probably be four times. He's lost mm. the rivalry more, but he knows about playing Oregon. So uh, you got to remember this guy is uh, um, yeah. he's not new to the he's uh, he's not new to the game. Yeah. Yeah. So he, okay. he's aware well, of Oregon. Um, so it's interesting. Nebraska could okay. win the game. Yeah. I, I'm going to say Nebraska will win the game because I don't know much about Oregon. All I know is that ever since they lost Marcus Mariota, they have gone downhill. Down. Um, I will tell you. In the game, uh, lost, for players Kelly. to watch, uh, the receptions, which I didn't get to, uh, is Alonzo Moore for Nebraska, who will have six receptions, uh, two touchdowns, and 201 yards for the season. Averages. Here's a big game. 17, Texas A&M at Auburn. Auburn is 1-1, one and, one, and Texas A&M is 2-0. You know who leads in receiving? Who? This guy, because when I go to the club, I receive a lot of phone numbers. Ooh. Okay. You're receiving a lot of phone numbers from the police if you keep talking, and maybe warrants if you get loud enough. Uh, players to watch in this game is uh, on the pass from Texas A&M. Trevor Knight, who is 43-79, could be better. 583 yards and four touchdowns on the rushes. 
Carryon, Curryon, or Carryon, or Carryana, whatever the freak it is. Johnson for Auburn, 41 carries, 218 yards, and three touchdowns. Christian Kirk for Texas A&M on the receptions, 13 receptions for 164 yards, two touchdowns. Could be better, but that's pretty good. Um... And Mississippi State at LSU, and this is one, I, I'm telling you, this is going to be a good game. Um, Mississippi State is 1-1, one one, but 1-0 one in the SEC. Since losing to uh, South Alabama, they got their heads in the game and gave South Carolina a big butt whipping. And I ain't lying. Uh, also, LSU is ranked 20 and 1-1 one and, and one and one after being beat by Wisconsin. And Les Miles, it, his chances of being the, a coach of this team next year, are very slim if he continues to have the lucky hand. It's a tough one to take. Well, the bar's been set so high for him. The guy's not a bad guy, but the bar's been set <coughs> high. I to take. Well, LSU um, hasn't been in the championship for like four years, and Trent Richardson, the dude that scored on him, has never had actually an NFL career. Um, I'm going to guess Fitzger stands for Fitzgerald. Nick Dillon Fitzgerald from Mississippi State um, passes 19 to 32. Not bad at all, 178 yards and two touchdowns. Probably could pass the ball a bit more. Uh, Rush is Nick Dillon Fitzgerald from Mississippi State. 19 carries and 206 yards. Really good. Uh, receptions is Donald Gray from Mississippi State. Seven receptions, 93 yards, and one touchdown. You know something's wrong with it when the team that's not ranked has more players on the players to watch list than the team that is ranked. And when it's probably <laughs> at LSU. Uh, North Texas and Florida. This yeah, the only thing that LSU has on their watch list is players to watch that will transfer. To players to watch a uh, pass, and I think this guy you said is from Alabama, Luke Del Rio, or did you say he's not? No, he's not from Alabama. He uh, he was he a quarterback? He used to be on. Uh, his father is a coach of the uh, Oakland Raiders. And, oh, uh, that's, that's a neat news. Yeah, and uh, he was uh, he was uh, recruited by Alabama, but he transferred to Florida because he wasn't going to play at Alabama. Well, that's what, like, um, um, Cornwell and... Well, Coker what's, played... What's his Coker name? Signed, Coker signed with Florida State, but Coker left Florida State to come to Alabama. Well, I mean, because what's uh, Florida State? Del Rio to left uh, Alabama to go, uh, just like uh, Bateman and Bateman and Cornwell. We had switch. a player named Ely who uh, left Alabama to go to Toledo, and he started. A lot of these guys they oh, won't yeah, start at a sc- certain school, like they're not going to start at That's Alabama, what I mean. but they go to another school and they'll start. And they'll be they may not be on as big of a program, but they'll be the starting quarterback yeah. and get to play. Yeah, That's what you need. Uh, Luke Del Rio for Florida is on the pass. He's 48 to 76 with six touchdowns and 576 yards. You know, it could be better, but pretty good. Uh, I've always said, though, that a person that is one of one or two of two on passes is worse than a person that's 20 of 40 or 30 of 60. Because, I mean, think about it. You could, those people threw more passes. So you could say they tried more to get a better, you know, make more passes and complete more passes. They only threw like one or two passes. So that's just something I said. Uh, same with rushing and receiving and defense and. Special teams, too. Uh, and kicking and punting. Rush Jeffrey Wilson for North Texas. 29 carries, 3 touchdowns, and 169 yards. Could be a good game. Receptions, Antonio Callaway for Florida. 13 receptions, 201 yards, and 2 touchdowns. North Texas will give them a game. This is a tough one for me. But is there, I mean, I want to say North Texas... I don't know why, but I'm going to say Florida just because Jim McElwain has been in Alabama and Nick Saban probably taught him something. Um, there is no way that North Texas is beating Florida. Yeah. Uh, ooh, here we got a game. Number 12, Michigan State at number 18, Notre Dame. Michigan State's got a better re- uh, schedule than Michigan. I just realized Michigan was actually ranked number four and they had the uh, hardball. I'll tell you a game you got to uh, watch. What? This guy's got game right here. Yeah, he's taking my place on the you know, with his uh, ACDC skeleton uh, my game rotten hell lots shirt. Of championships and okay, in the I don't know Earth. some of these people's name, but for uh, Notre Dame, Deshaun Deshaun Kaiser mm-hmm. on the pass, 30 42, 371 yards and seven touchdowns on the rush. Josh Adams on Notre Dame, 21 carries. You see right there, Louisville yards. is wearing a um, a bright red helmet, Ooh. and it's going to have a, a butterfly on the back. Okay, Ali, listen to me. Uh, Muhammad Ali passed away, uh, oh, yeah. and uh, this year, and Muhammad Ali was from Louisville. So on game, so for the game tomorrow, Louisville is going to honor Muhammad Ali 
with a butterfly on the back of the helmet with Ali in it because Ali's biggest phrase was float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Uh, he was kind of a poet, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've brought some poets, but they're really depressing or cannibal. And well, make... boxing poets aren't. <laughs> yeah. They are depressing because they usually pound the other person. Okay, not. well, um, uh, yeah, that's really neat. I think we were supposed to get some Super Cooper signs on the back of our helmets for Brooks, but I don't know if we're ever going to get them. Um, if I say this right... Equanimia, uh, Quanimios, Saint, blah, blah, blah. I don't even, it won't even show you. Do you want to hear some of my poetry? Uh, Norder, Norder, no. Roses are red, violets are green. There's so many women out there who are in love with me. There are so many poems that you could say besides that that would actually be true, but. Yeah. Okay, for Notre Dame, he, uh, has receptions, 11 receptions, 160 yards, two touchdowns. And then we have, uh, wait, we didn't even give our picks. Give me your pick for this game. Which game? This game. State at Dame. Michigan State at Notre Dame? Yep. Ah, do, 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 do. I'm going to say Notre Dame. Because Notre Dame, well, Notre Dame's 1-1 one and one, one and one, and Michigan State's 1-0. Oh. You know, so Notre Dame has one. I'll go with Michigan State. That's a tough one right there. That's Notre Dame. I don't know. I think Notre, Notre Dame, Dame lost to Texas in overtime, but. But Texas is, they remember Texas beat like. Oh, no, but Texas is good, and Notre Dame is good. Tech, Notre Dame has defense problems. Um, oh, wait, we got a game right here. Okay, they just came off a big win against TCU, and TCU should have never let them. That's one thing I can't say about TCU. They let these little teams. Arkansas and Texas State? Yeah, Arkansas came off a big win last year. Uh, it's obvious. Uh, I could say Texas State will give them a game, but Arkansas They're will not, probably win. Yeah. Arkansas is ranked 24 after TCU. I'm sorry, but they, for some reason, let Texas Tech – you know, almost beat them, and because they're lazy, they kind of did what LeBron James did sometimes with the Heat in his final season, but you know what they did? They would come back and win the games, you know, and that's what made the difference. Um, Tyler Jones for Texas State, uh, the past 40 of 55, 418 yards, four touchdowns. That is acceptable. Uh, Raleigh Williams the third for Arkansas on the rush is 52 carries for a touchdown at 233 yards. Drew Morgan for Arkansas on the receptions, 140 yards, 12 receptions, and one touchdown. And then we have Georgia at Missouri, which I can already tell you're going to say Texas State will not beat Arkansas. But no. Uh, number 16, Georgia at Missouri. Uh, Georgia is going to win this game, I think. Yeah, I don't know Georgia yet. Missouri's definitely got a new coach. Uh, they're in transition. Uh, they've had problems yeah. last year. Uh, Missouri's problem was very program was very strong and uh, went to the SEC championship, but uh, yeah. uh, they were dealt okay. some blows and they haven't been the same. But uh, I would imagine last year's Georgia Missouri game was considered one of the worst games of the year. It was boring and horrible. Hopefully it'll be a better yeah. game this well, year. Well, the players to watch on the pass is Drew Locke with, uh, from Missouri. But 730 yards, really good. But 48, 47 to, uh, through 88 passes could do better. But uh, really good. Six touchdowns. And Nick Chubb for Georgia on the rush. 52 carries, 302 yards, and three touchdowns. And Isaiah McKenzie on Georgia receptions. Eight receptions, 183 yards, two touchdowns. Like I said, Georgia's going to win this game. Let me tell you who gets a lot of touches. What? <laughs> This man right Okay. Because the women love they, to touch this there guy are right many, here. There are children watching this. I'm only I'm allowed to say this because they get it. You know my number. Um, and if you don't, just call me. Uh, Ohio State to Oklahoma. Oklahoma's going to beat the bull crap out of this. It was terrible Ohio State team. Uh, Ohio State's 2-0, ranked right third, and Oklahoma's ranked right 14th and 1-1. One one. Uh, the players to watch, uh, Baker Mayfield on the pass, 38-53, 567 yards, five touchdowns on Mac Weber of Ohio State on the rush, 36 carries, 228 yards, and a touchdown. Curtis Samuel for uh, Ohio State receptions, 14 receptions, 239 yards, and two touchdowns. Did you see where uh, that backup quarterback was talking about Baker Mayfield and sounded a little weird? He was, like, talking like, yeah, you know, we're going to hit this team hard, and I might even come in. So it sounds like he's trying to steal Baker Mayfield's job. No. Nah. Um, who you got winning this game? Um... I mean, I don't think Ohio State's played enough good teams. I always go Ohio State. Oh, God. I mean, I'm not just because they beat us. Okay. No, no. Listen to I me. Know. I get to talk. You're not letting me talk. I mean, that's what this show's about. The camera's on me predominantly. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not the biggest Ohio State fan. I respect Ohio State. Don't yeah. get me wrong. I'm not going to bash uh, you. You have to respect. But everybody. I'm not always taking Ohio State 
whoever they play. If yeah. it's Bama, then it depends on the situation. But regardless, I'm taking Ohio State and Alabama are the two best programs in the country. And uh, Oklahoma hasn't proved to me that they can beat anybody. So, no, I'm not taking Oklahoma. I'm taking Ohio State. All Update, the Ross, if they allow it, has at least got to the one-yard line. Baylor's beating them 14-3 to right now. Okay, uh, next one. Uh, we're trying. We're trying to skip through this so we can get to some other stuff. Portland State one and one is playing Washington two and zero. Washington is ranked number eight. I could see Portland State giving them a game, but Washington will win this game. I didn't even know Washington was ranked number eight. Uh, players to watch is Jake Browning from Washington, pass forty one of eight, fifty five, five hundred eighty one yards and eight touchdowns. Mike Miles Gaskin from Washington, rushing, uh, rushing twenty seven carries, hundred twenty four yards and a touchdown. John Ross from Washington, reception twelve receptions for one hundred fifty seven yards and four touchdowns. You've obviously got Washington. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do, and I would like to make a serious comment. Um, I'm really against uh, polls until after the fourth game or so because uh, people are really high on Washington, and I'm not saying that Washington doesn't have a well, good I mean, program. We're high. We don't know yet. Um, I, don't, I believe that the rankings affect um, – like a team can be ranked high, like LSU – and uh, when they lose, they don't fall down as far. A team like Wisconsin beats a team like LSU, and they move up higher because of the ranking. But um, Washington uh, was building a program with Steve Sarkeesian, who Alabama just hired as an analyst. Yeah. But Steve Sarkeesian left Washington to go to USC. Washington's coach now is uh, Boise State's old coach, who had a lot of success, uh, Chris Peterson. Mm. So, um, Good to know. Yeah, and, you know, Washington may be good, but they hadn't really played anybody. People right now, they there's certain teams, get out of the they don't, no one really knows what teams have. And the media is high on teams that they haven't proved it, they don't know. Really, I don't like the, I, I don't think we should, let's see, this is the third week. I don't think we should have rankings for another week or two myself. Yeah, I'm fine with the rankings, though. Um, also, uh, a Heisman pick might be Lou, one of the players on Louisville. Was it the quarterback? I'm pretty sure. Um, my husband vote. <laughs> yeah, be, his name is Jackson. Okay. Uh, my husband vote is Eddie Jackson for Alabama. I'm just putting that out there. I think we should have a defensive person or an offensive lineman or defensive lineman, or maybe Jonathan Allen. You know, Jonathan I'm, Allen. If I was gonna go, um, offensively, I don't know. Right. Jalen Hurts is on. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and get to this. Um, USC is one and one. They'll be playing uh, one of your good teams, uh, number seven Stanford, who I was saying earlier is back and forth, back and forth. But all the things we out there. One Stanford and last year didn't start off yeah. very good, but was strong at the end. They lost to Northwestern, and this year they're a little slow. Yeah. They have that Christian McCaffrey that's uh, really good, and uh, I take Stanford to win it. Stanford is the the bigger program. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, now USC got blown out by Alabama. And, well, I mean, uh, don't it's know what they really have. Yeah, exactly. It was Alabama, and Alabama won in all phases of the game. And it's hard to play a team like well, Alabama. Well, I mean, they they gave us a good game game in the first half. So on Facebook though was uh, USC quarterback say telling his coach. You, I thought when you said Alabama, you meant Auburn, Alabama, not Alabama, <laughs> Alabama. Yeah. yeah, we were prepared yeah. for the wrong. Yeah. I think Pop also on Facebook. Uh, that's like I said, funny. I like that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, uh, I'm going to take I thought you meant I'm Auburn, not Stanford. Tuscaloosa. <laughs> uh, players to watch is Max Brown with an E at the <coughs> for USC. He on pass. He is 37 to 59, 283 yards and two touchdowns. On rush, Christian McCaffrey for Stanford, 22 carries, 126 yards and two touchdowns. Then on receptions, we have Darius Rogers for USC, nine receptions for 120. 27 yards. Uh, in our final game, 11, Texas 2-0, and who is playing California. When it would, I could see California. California, California. No how to party, no how to party, no, California. I'll tell you, know who knows how to party. Oh, God. The University of Alabama. Oh, and this man. This Lady. man is about to be in. Call me. Yeah, I, 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 come, I come as a package. Um, uh, players to watch Chris Webb for California pass 70, 79 of 126, 90, 963 yards, nine touchdowns. That is really impressive. Uh, Vic on, in Weir on Cal, rush 20 car, uh, carries, 145 yards. And Chad Hansen for California, uh, receptions, 28 receptions for 350 yards and three touchdowns. I see California. What in this game? But I'm gonna go no, ahead. I think I'm it's pick uh, Texas. Yeah, Texas. The only thing I give uh, Cal is the fact that this game is a late game. It comes on at uh now at seven thirty uh, Pacific time, but it's gonna be 
nine thirty uh, Central Time, which is what Texas is in the Central Time Zone. But uh, Texas is a better program than Cal. Cal has uh, gone down the last few years, and they've really been uh, insignificant. So uh, outside of it being in Cal and being a late game, I think Texas. Has okay. Well, some baseball updates. Uh, I'm gonna guess Chicago is winning right now, five to four in the final in the tenth. Uh, Boston well, won five to two. Record. Cleveland won seven to four. Seattle seventy eight sixty eight, and Houston is seventy six and seventy. Uh, San Francisco seventy eight sixty eight, and I don't even know STL whatever that is. St. Louis. St. Louis is seventy six and sixty. I don't know. I like the Cardinals. Um, we're gonna go ahead into some Sports Illustrated news on RG three. Bull, bull. Okay, this is already messed up. Well, um, let's. I'm trying to get some. This is bull crap. Uh, RG3 with latest in severe injury. RG3 shot at reclaiming stardom is effectively over because RG3 has recently been injured. As what happened? RG3 got injured. I didn't know that. When? I don't keep About up with four the days ago. Wait, well, he got injured, what, uh, in practice, or did he get injured in the game Sunday? I'm going to look it up. Yeah, I found out about that. Yeah, I didn't know. Poor um, guy. I hated he got injured. You can't help an injury. I mean, that's a part of the game, but... While we're getting more updates on the RG... Football is such a physical game. I don't even think humans... Well, he's not like it. Peyton Manning. He gets... He's a mobile quarterback. Yeah. Well, you, know, you can't and and help and getting injured. Get you have no... No one wants to get well, injured. Well, that's what Peyton Manning... The only, that's, Peyton Manning was ever used to injuries. That's why I took steroids when he broke his neck. But, uh... RG3 injury. Sadly, that rhymes. Uh, yes. Let me tell you about injuries. Uh, fractured hit. Oh, yeah. How... I've broken a lot of hearts. Okay. What... You've only broken the oh, okay. What do you know? Here's You've a been around way. this world eleven years, not even twelve years yet. And I've had two girlfriends, one two times. Two girlfriends? How many girls have you ever kissed besides falling down in your lips like Okay, all right. Well, that's a story for later. Just because okay. a dog licked your face doesn't mean you've ever kissed. Okay, right? um, a Cleveland Browns quarterback, Robert Griffin III, is out for at least eight games and probably the season. Here's how it happened. Um, Robert Griffin III fractured his left shoulder in the warning, in the, uh, warning minutes of Sunday's 29-10 loss to the Eagles and is on injured reserve for at least eight weeks, but he's likely to miss the entire season, and it forces the Browns to look long and hard at drafting a quarterback high in 2017. The Browns, who have two first-round picks next year, had hopes Griffin might be a long-term answer. Now Griffin's energy... Injury is blah, blah, That third, is waning. Third major one if, since his if there was a hell, spell the Let me tell you something. Season. Griffin had been widely criticized for taking on a defender at a meaningless point in the game. I'm going to tell you something. If there was hell on earth, it would be the Cleveland Browns. I mean, like, seriously. I mean, everything they do, everybody that goes there, it sucks. I well, mean, I mean yeah. their owner... They could not win a championship there for nothing. Their owner took the team to Baltimore and won two championships. Yeah. Sorry, Cleveland Browns, but it's like purgatory or something. I mean, yeah, you well, may I mean, want to. You're, you're in a living hell zone right if now. If you get drafted by Cleveland, you may want to somehow buy your way okay, out of it, uh, you know? I would rather be the only male player on a WNBA team than to play for the Okay, Cleveland well Browns. we have, Okay, well we're going to end today. Awesome. I would rather be the only male gymnast on an all female team. Okay. Than to we play have some for the other Cleveland news. Ben Scully reflects on his career of 67 years in baseball and he has actually announced he will only be on for like a couple more days. I just like to talk he about won't even what make a cool to the name. How do I get a name like Ben Scully? Like like Max Power from the Simpsons. That's a great name. Uh, Vince That's Scully. your name in Detective I want to. I mean, I want that name. I wonder. Mm -hmm. I mean, what if I change my name to Vince Scully and make everybody call me that? Or I change it to something else, Scully. All right. Well, I'll be right back. I gotta go. Fresh well, don't leave the camera on me. Go ahead and push pause. Pause. Okay. Because it's Nestle. 
drumstick ice cream time. Well, okay. Well, we're going to end on that. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Around the Ring. And if you didn't enjoy it, blame this man because I did all I could do to make it interesting. Yes. The only interesting thing he said was all the cuckoo, cuckoo, crazy predictions of upsets that will not happen. Cleveland Browns will win a Super Bowl before any team he predicted wins The New York Giants will win a Super Bowl because Eli Manning wants to be paid. The New York Giants. And also, the only upset that's going to happen. The New York Giants. You you want to name another upset? People finding out that all these dating things that you're saying are wrong and false. False like an opinion. Well, not like an opinion you'd say, but whatever false is. False like George Washington was president of China. That's how false that is. Well, we're going to end on that note. If you enjoyed, um, remember to check out Chadwick's channel, Crestodon. Remember to check out my other channels, Master Kit Fist Home, and my sisters, Maya Crystal, and Slaughterhouse 042. Uh, this is uh, Slaughterhouse04 saying if you want to watch more videos like this, comment, like, and or subscribe. And uh, see you in the next video.